Okay guys, we're back. Let's get these uh, stepper towers on and get our linear rails on up here. So for the stepper towers, hang on, I got a dog under my feet here. Honey, you're going to have to move. 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 Out. Go. Out. Out. We're going to need four of these uh, M5 by 50 screws. We'll set those right here. You're going to need four of these spring ball T nuts, 5 millimeter. And then We'll start over here on the far one, which is the left side. And your screws that hold these in go through the front right there. And right here. So it'll be like that. This all hangs off the back of the printer. I throw them in there. Kind of helps to line up the... Uh, nuts okay find the right uh, wrench here sorry the camera's going to shake a little bit because it's actually up on top of the bench and this bench is up on wheels and it wobbles a little bit I don't have my tall camera mount in here I can't find it There we go. Left tower's on. Now we'll do the same thing, put the right tower on, and that's it. Your X and Y steppers are in place. Now, next is the linear rails, and I already have screws dropped in this, so it's going to make this process a lot easier, and these are greased up really well too, so my hands are going to be greasy, and I'm going to complain about it. So. If you look on here, I have a total of six M3 screws for my rails. So we're going to need a total of 12 of the M3 nuts, spring nuts, to do the two Y axis. So now what I do is, since I have the screws already in there, kind of center the rail front to back. I think there is a spec in the deal. But I just lay it over like this and it gives me an idea kind of where to set the nuts. Looks like they're all close enough that they'll catch. Then I just set that on there. And you don't need to tighten these down just yet. Just get them started. Now here's the trick. This right here slides back and forth to tension the belt. And because of the EVA design and these right here, you can't get all the way back here to the back. It'll hit. So I'm going to uh, measure this out so that they're equal. I'm going to set mine back 50 millimeters. Same thing. Just slide that up till it touches. Now you want to snug at least one of these up so you don't bump them back and forth as you're doing the rest of this. And if you look at this, that gives it uh, quite a bit of travel. So all the way up against the uh, linear rail gives us 12 millimeters 11 and a half millimeters of adjustment that is more than enough to adjust the belts 
So next is the x-axis. And I will tell you from experience that you want to try to find something nice and flat like a piece of glass. And make sure that if this thing has any kind of a bow in it, you get the flattest side to the top. Only because I had one over there that had a tiny bit of a bow in it. And it uh, it made it look terrible on the uh, map on the uh, when I would do the bed mesh. So left side X carriage. And it's going to have three screws that go into the block. This, this one right here doesn't actually go into the block. So it's just three per carriage, two on the outside, and then one actually goes in underneath where the uh, 2020 extrusion goes. So you do have to get these on before you put the 2020 in. And these are just M3x8s. <laughs> I'm sitting there tightening that down. I'm thinking there's a M5 nut that has to go up inside of here. And there he is. I'll show you. It's really upsetting when you get it all put together and you realize that hole right there needs an M5 nut. So what I would do is grab a M5 screw. Put through the hole. Like that. Get the nut started on it. And then pull it up in there and kind of hold it there while you put these back on. Snug these up pretty good. And then do the same thing on this one. Take an M5, put through there. Grab the M5 nut. Slide it up in there. And then take your uh, M3x8s. Three more of them and get this side secured. Now be very careful you don't slide these off the end. It'll shoot balls everywhere. And I guarantee you will not find all of the balls to get it back together. Now here is a couple of pieces. Printed pieces. That I use to help line things up. And looks like I'm missing part of one of them here. See if I can find the uh, T nut and the screw. So, two more M5 spring nuts in this piece. Now you're going to want two M5 by 12. Up through the bottom here. And then you want to catch that T nut that you just put in there right there. I'm going to catch that with that M5 and just snug it up. Do not tighten it. You just want it to hold it in place. Same thing over on this side. Just snug. That's all you need for right now is just snug. This bar right here clips into the back side and then comes up here and drops in there. And I use uh, hammerhead T-nuts that turn into place as you tighten them. You just snug it up. And that one didn't catch. Same thing over here. Now, that's got the x-axis locked in and squared with the front frame here. We're going to leave those in place here for just a couple minutes. And we're going to do the exact same thing here that we just did on the Y's is we are going to get the T-nuts in place. And then you're going to want to set this up so it's centered on each side. And uh, I'm sure in the docks there's a uh, number, but I'm going to do it this way. 
35.28, let's see what we have over here, we're going to be getting close, yep, that's close enough, 35.3, 35.2, one side or the other, I wasn't real well zeroed out either, so, and we'll go ahead and tighten these down, want to get them pretty good and tight, now we'll finish up the X joints and the next thing we need is another M5 spring nut on the top side of these 2020s. So one here, one here. That one didn't want to be in there, it jumped right back out. So on these we have a bearing stack and an idler. So right here as we go together with this, there's going to be an idler under here and a bearing stack here. So we'll build a bearing stack on this one right here. Bearing stack is exactly the same. Shim, bearing, bearing, shim. Idler out here. Then this slips right on the top. It's an M5 by 12 in here. And then an M5 by 25, I do believe it is, is the one for this. Uh, we'll know here in just a second. You just got to go all the way down and pick that nut up and then pull it all the way up. So, in just a second here. Now you can go ahead and tighten these down. We'll do the same thing over here. Bearing stack and an idler. So idler rides out here on this one. Bearing stack goes in there on that one. And just like before, shim, flange bearing, flange bearing, shim. I didn't realize that the uh, camera had uh, got hot and started pointing down at the desk. So I have no idea how much you guys missed. It's just not picking up. Oh, it did. Finally picked it up. Okay. After lots of putzing around, we finally got it done. Make sure everything is good and tightened up on here. While you still have these pieces in place. That way you know everything is good and square. Don't over tighten it to the point of breaking the ABS or cracking it. There you go. Next, I've got to find my 5mm tap. You're not supposed to do it this way, but I'm going to. They say don't ever use a power tool to tap threads. But, it's soft aluminum. Throw a little bit of uh, gun oil on there just to keep the threads happy. There we go. We're now threaded. Grab a couple of uh, M5x8s here. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple M5 washers on these to spread the load out. And for right now I'm just going to snug those up a little bit. Adjuster towers. A couple of uh, M5 spring nuts. Okay, M5 by 20 through there, M5 nut. Actually, I got it a little far. Just gonna line that up, and that's the wrong one. This one goes over here. Just leave it so that it's got room to slide. There you go. The uh, X and Y gantry are together. Now we've got to build the tool head. Dropped a uh, hammerhead T nut in there. What I do, tighten down one side, and on the other side, we'll tighten down the front, just snug, make sure all the rest are loose. And 
run that back and forth a few times and then stop down here close to this end snug it up and then just run it through there make sure it feels nice and smooth no extra resistance and then go through and tighten them all up next thing we got to do is assemble the tool head and before I do that I've got to solder up a end stop I got a print uh, end stop block for here so the end stop is actually a micro switch that will set in here. I'll show you here. Comes with the Fabrico kit. So I got to solder some wires on here so that I can connect it up. But that end stop switch sets inside that base. And then when it bolts down on the block, it just holds it in place. And then it'll come over here and there'll be a piece that bolts on here that stands up that triggers that. But I gotta solder that up first. And I know I printed one of them in stop blocks for this. So that'll go up here over there like that. And that'll be used to stop it. So that's where we're stopping at for tonight. It's getting late. We'll pick this up tomorrow and we'll finish it up. I'll get some things soldered up in the meantime. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch up to you after a while.